Testing. Check. Well, we got time wise. Yeah. Yep. Ten minutes. Okay. Well, we'll sit down. Okay. Let's see here. Good morning and welcome to pre worship music time. They say you 
right there to help us up if we should stumble to give us rest when we are weary of this life and when the world around us seems like it could crumble to give us hope that everything will turn our eyes if not today then when do I turn my back on sin do I walk the way you left for me let my life in you begin if not for you then why do we live this life to die there's just one answer in the end and I've got to ask myself if not today, then when? Sometimes I struggle to believe When you could take my hand And take command And set my spirit free If not today Then when Do I turn my back on sin? Do I walk the way you left for me?
joys when I hear his sweet voice in the tempest to him I can cling there to lean on his arms safe secure from all harm when he reached down his hand for me now when he reached down his hand Welcome to worship. It's good to see everybody, and I hope it's good to be seen. Well, that went right over there <laughs> in slow motion. Okay, well, uh, to see everybody, it's an awesome thing. Folks from Furlon, we're glad you could come with us and have this time of uh, dedication and blessing. Uh, we're going to have the, uh, as you've already seen in there, if you, if you haven't looked in your bullet and you're already late, uh, so it's a uh, blessing of the quilts, the personal care kits, baby care kits, and school kits. And before we get into that, just to uh, remind you that you have the opportunity after worship to come up and see what those kits look like uh, that we're sending overseas through Lutheran World Relief. And then here's the, uh, the, the special uh, quilt that's on display, and you're sitting on the rest of them, um, which is a good deal. So if you need to, if you're cold, you can just cozy up in one of them. It's okay. You know? They'll go to sleep. Uh, they'll go, yeah, that's right. You'll go to sleep. And uh, that means I'd have to have somebody come and wake you up. <laughs> wake me up? <laughs> okay, good luck with that, I'm telling you. All right. Uh, but we're really pleased that you could be here with us. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to share this day with you. And, um, and all the rest of the folks who are here with us today, uh, welcome. And it's our prayer that our Lord Jesus will bless you during this time. And it's always good to get together with fellow Christians uh, to praise our Lord, uh, to seek uh, his blessings and answers to prayer. And uh, so thank you for being here. We're going to get into uh, the blessing of the quilts and whatnot, and then have our prayers following that. So if you have some folks in mind that you would like to uh, bring before our Lord in prayer, then by all means, uh, lift their names to us when the time comes. <clears throat> Are you on the questions? Yeah, yes, I was. I'm glad that one was open. Keeping me straight, I know. I need the help I can get. Cheryl, not here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody, has Somebody has to control me. That's right. All right. Well, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today we give thanks and glory to God as we seek His blessing upon these quilts, the personal care, baby care, and school kits. The quilts placed on the pews were assembled with loving hands and hearts by women of our congregation and Furlong, Furlon Lutheran in Sweet Home, knowing that they are and are doing a uh, service to our Lord by providing an article of warmth and comfort. Ten quilts were donated to Samaritan Evergreen Hospice in Albany to give comfort to those who suffer in the end-of-life challenges. Also to Lutheran World Relief, who will receive the majority of these quilts to aid people who are victims of natural disasters. As the people who receive them are wrapped in the warmth and the comfort of these quilts, they are enfolded with our prayers for them. We know our Lord Jesus will provide strength, courage, and hope as they rebuild their lives and homes. And so may they be reminded that though they may lose possessions, they will not lose Jesus. When baby care and personal care kits are received, it's our prayer that hygiene care brings with it our prayers that the recipients will come to know the cleansing power of Jesus' love and forgiveness. When children receive their school kits, may our Lord Jesus 
bless them in their learning, and to fill them with the knowledge of and faith in our gracious God. And for the personal care kits, that folks will begin to see how important it is to have one who truly cares for them, who does not forget them, and that they will be encouraged and they will know Jesus' love. So together, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to your children and praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Accept these quilts, personal care, baby care, and school kits, which we offer in thanksgiving. May they bring joy and comfort as people receive them. May their beauty and usefulness reflect your beauty of holiness and proclaim the glory of your majesty in our outreach. And so now blessed and dedicate be these quilts and the care kits in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now for our... Whoa. Well, now you're loud. And now I'm loud. Uh, so it's time for our prayer. We can turn that down just a little bit. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, folks that um, we lift up in a continuation for Pat Groobley, for Wayne Reese Camp, uh, for Todd Peterson, and for Christine Hall. And uh, so I'm opening it up now that you can share some names, people that are in need of prayer. Donald Ross. Donald Ross. Donald Ross. Thank you. Be right back. Uh, for the friends and family of Eunice. <laughs> Prayers for my former babysitter. She's in her high 80s now and has leg infection. So she needs some help. And her name? Mary. Okay. Any others? Any praises? Any thanksgivings? Hang in. Hot doggies. Really? I'd like to raise up Wanda Frenzel. She's having surgery on Wednesday, and she's a little nervous about it, so. Okay, and her first name was again? Wanda. Wanda, thank you. <clears throat> Others? Pray for my wife, Cheryl. She's got vertigo again today. You know what they say about blondes? Shh. Be quiet. <laughs> I knew I'd get a raise out of somebody. <laughs> no, seriously, that's... Uh, She's funny, but she's also dizzy <laughs> right now. <laughs> mm. I can't stand it. Okay. <laughs> I know. She'll, it'll get back to me, and I'll be in trouble. I know that. Yeah. Um, I have a praise. Um, Emily and the girls are in their new apartment. Yay. And uh, Haley is doing wonderful. She's lost all the weight that she gained through the mold infections. But um, it'll take years for it to get out of her body. But things are looking up. So Amen. thank you all for your prayers. <coughs> um, I have a praise. I've been working on something since uh, August of 2022. Uh, in the last week, I received letters from both the BPA and the Corps of Engineers on this business at Green Peter with a deep drawdown. So, you know, got to be patient. Thank you. Any others? Well, I'm sure that uh, if you're not speaking them out loud, you do have some folks that you want to lift up, and, and the Lord knows the heart. You know that. And uh, during the prayers, saying, Lord, uh, hear my prayer. I come before you on behalf of such and such, or I give you praise and thanksgiving for whatever uh, you have received in 
and in his blessings or praise that someone else you know has received ble blessings huh hey i just want to say it's good to see you cherokee welcome oh back. yeah there she is <laughs> over there hiding in the corner yeah close to the exit <laughs> 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 you get any further out there, you'll be out the door, you know? All right. But it's great to see you all. Yeah. Okay, let's go to our Lord. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence with us. And thank you for the confidence that we have because you are present with us always. Thank you that we have the, the promise that not only do you hear our prayers, you are already acting on our behalf. Your will is already being done. Sometimes we don't understand what it means that you're exercising your will because it really doesn't, uh, doesn't go along with what we want. But we know that in your ultimate plan, as scripture tells us, all things work for the good for those who, who do trust in you. And that's my paraphrasation, Lord, you know that. But thank you. Thank you that your presence is with Pat and Wayne and praying that uh, for Pat that they'll f some, sometime soon discover what it is that is affecting his blood. And for Wayne, that uh, healing from his knee replacement is going well. Uh, for Todd, that is healing from his uh, broken ankle and from the conge congestive heart failure. For Christine, as she continues her battle with cancer, uh, trusting in you that uh, if you so will, that she will be healed of the cancer. Uh, for Donald Ross, uh, for whatever it is that uh, he is facing, we know that you know what is happening in his life and that you all ready are going ahead of him and preparing that which is good and right and according to your will. We lift up to you uh, Jug and the family and the, upon the death of Eunice and um, we thank you that you have gathered together together with the, the other saints in light uh, Eunice and uh, we all just like her await the time in which we will join your family in the heavenly realm. For Mary, who is uh, experiencing a leg infection, Lord, let your hand be upon her and upon her infection, and may you eradicate it. For Wanda, who is being very nervous about the upcoming uh, surgery, we ask Heavenly Father that you will bring calm and peace to her and that all the anxieties will dissipate and that she will know that we are lifting her up to you, uh, that you will take care of her and hold her close while she's uh, experiencing the surgery. For Cheryl in her vertigo, and Lord, many of us understand what that's all about, uh, when we are just totally unable to, uh, to function because we have the, well, it makes us ill and it help, makes us fall down. So Heavenly Father, uh, bless her and all others who are experiencing this and uh, to have equilibrium again. We give, give you praise that Emily and her girls are now in their new apartment and that Haley is doing so well with the uh, losing of weight. And we ask Heavenly Father that you will expedite uh, the, uh, what is going on in her body as a result of the exposure to the, uh, whatever it is, I can't remember what it is, uh, the mold, thank you. And also, Lord, that you are our blessing uh, the efforts of, um, of Ron in uh, dealing with the BPA and Corps of Engineers having to do with the, the dam system in, uh, here in the St. Anne River. Uh, continue to have your hand in the midst of this, that uh, life will continue uh, without any, uh, any fear of, uh, of failure either of uh, any of the dams or of the electricity failing. And Lord, you know the hearts of us. We thank you that you are uh, listening and that you are answering our prayers. So now we ask, Heavenly Father, that you receive this time of worship as we intend it to be, uh, a time of thanksgiving and praise, a time of lifting up your name, which is above all names, and that we might uh, be as that evening sacrifice and the incense that comes to you uh, in the prayers of your people. So thank you for hearing us, and we, <clears throat> we thank you for your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able.
is the day. Open, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. Let, let us rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. it. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. We, we love, love because, because God, God first, first loved, loved us. us. If someone says, I love God, yet hates a brother or sister, that person is a liar. For, For one, one cannot, cannot love God who is not seen, if one does not love a brother or sister who is seen. This, then, is the command Christ gave us. Anyone who loves God must also love a brother or sister. O, o Divine, Divine Master, Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Son and the Holy Spirit we come. We lift our voices in His praise and ask His will be done. We sing Alleluia, glory to our King. We sing be with you and also with you let us pray almighty God source of every blessing your generous goodness comes to us anew every day by the work of your spirit lead us to acknowledge your goodness give thanks for your benefits and serve you in willing obedience through your son Jesus Christ our Lord amen
Together we confess. Eternal God, God hear, hear us as we confess our sins before you and each other. Our tongues speak of love, but our hearts hold anger. Our voices cry out for compassion, but our actions testify only to apathy. You have given us a path to follow, but our feet lead us into darkness. Forgive us these sins and the sins we dare not speak in the name of Jesus. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. This is how God showed love for us. Jesus came into the world so that we might have life. And this is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that God loves us and sent Jesus to us so that our sins are forgiven. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world by the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> and even though we don't have kids, uh, what we do? We do! Hot doggies! I love it. Okay. All right. Oh, it's good to see ya. Don't worry, I'm not going to bite you. And I'm certainly not going to eat you. So. Come on over here. I got something for you to do. You want to open up that box? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, now we get the little one out. Can you open that one too? Okay, hold on to it. There we go. Okay, let's see what we have in here. Oh my goodness, it's a gift for me. It's a whole cup full of coins. Wow. <laughs> Must be a couple of bucks in here, I think. Well, what do you think of that? Is that pretty cool? Yeah. <sighs> well, in today's gospel, Jesus has something to say to some people. Hmm? And that is a, it's a pretty tough deal. Because these are some folks that came to Jesus and they were hoping that they could trick him. They wanted to be able to say, yeah, me too. <laughs> they wanted to be able to say, aha, you see, Jesus is doing something wrong. He's speaking wrongly. We're going to get him. You know? So, uh, when they're trying to trick him, they bring, they come to Jesus and they say, uh, Jesus, is it, is it right to, uh, to uh, pay taxes to Caesar, the, you know, the king? And uh, Jesus, he knew what they were up to. And so uh, he says, well, show me the coin. And so they probably reached into their pockets, who knows, but they came up with a, uh, a denarius, okay? And the denarius was a day's wage. And it was something that any, any person would have in their pocket, they were, no, perhaps. And uh, they showed Jesus the coin. And uh, you see what this one has? You, you see what all the coins have on it? What is that? Yeah? It's a picture of a man, isn't it? And this was George Washington, the first president. Okay? And uh, so Jesus says, well, whose image is that? And uh, whose inscription, in other words, whose letters, whose words are there? And they said, well, that's Caesar's. You see what they were trying to do? They were trying to get him to say, well, you don't want to pay taxes. No, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not legal. You know, he shouldn't be doing that. No, Jesus says, well, if that's Caesar's coin, you give the coin to Caesar. But you give those things that are God, are God's, to God. What was he saying? Well, we do pay our taxes. <coughs> And we also give to God all that we are and all that we have. Jesus says, it's not a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Some of that, it's, a, it's all of it. So when you go and you pay your taxes, you're doing what is right. You're doing what is right. 
And when you give all that you are and all that you have to Jesus, to God, you're doing what is right. It's what He wants. So, if you have an offering that you put in the, in the offering plate, you know that you are giving to God what belongs to God. And, more importantly, that you believe in Jesus and you say, Jesus, you have my heart. I believe in you. Pretty cool, huh? That's what he's wanting us to do. And when we do that, he is saying, that is so great. You trust me. You believe in me. He might even say, hot doggies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, let's have a prayer, okay? Thank you, gracious God, for showing us what we really need to do as believers in you. The most important thing is to give you what is due you, what you deserve, what you command, and that is ourselves and everything that we are and everything that we have. Help us to do this and to do it with joy because you are our God and you, through your Son, Jesus, have saved us from our sins. Thank you for that wonderful gift. And thank you in Jesus' name and all God's children say, Amen, Amen Anna. Yeehaw! <laughs> Pretty cool, hey? Yeah. Do we do we have somebody? Is, is Miss Mary doing it this morning? Yep. Okay. You go with Miss Mary down there. She's got some really neat stuff for you to do today. Cool. Oh, I almost forgot. Almost forgot. Almost forgot. Hey, what's his name? Theo. 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 Oh, I like that name. Theo. <coughs> One of God. <laughs> Okay, you need to take this and look around. Maybe Mom can help you out a little bit. But find somebody out there and hand that to them, okay? Cool. He's a man on a mission. <laughs> Who do I give it to? Uh-oh, I think he's zoomed in on somebody. Well, maybe not. Okay, he'll get it. <laughs> Who got it? Oh, still looking. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the re. <laughs> All right. Okay, the scripture readings for today are, um, we're going to do Psalms, that's 96, verses 1 through 9. They're found uh, in your pew Bibles on page 591. And for those who are visitors, if you lift up the quilts, there's Bibles underneath the chairs. <laughs> and I think we'll, we'll read this uh, responsibly. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell him of salvation from day to day. Declare his glories among the nation, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods of people are worshiped idols. But the Lord made the heavens Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of people. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering into to his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. And now the first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7, on page 719. Okay. Now, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue the nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him, that the gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. 
I will break into pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. For the sake of my servant Job, the Israel, I messed that up, the, <laughs> the, and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord. There is no other besides me. There is no God, no other God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. There is none other. Excuse me. There is none other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. Um, woe to him who strives with him, who formed him. A pot among an earthen, earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who formed it, what are you making? or your work has no handles? Woe to him who says to a father, what are you begetting? Or to a woman, with what are you in labor? Okay. Um, Thessalonians 1, chap uh, first chapter 1 through 10. Uh, wake up, Mary. <laughs> okay. Paul... Salinus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. The Thessalonians' faith and example. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your works of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord for whom you, for whom you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you may become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acadia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Arcadia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything, for they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn <clears throat> to God from idols to serving the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. And now you stand please for the reading of the gospel if you are able. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him, meaning Jesus, in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, 
Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went their way. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. friends and family in Christ, may God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come, our Savior Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. Our passage today from Mark's Gospel is an interesting one, and though the story speaks of individuals trying to plant evil, they unknowingly unleashed an answer from our Savior about living in a confusing time. You see, people had been living in Palestine because it was a promised land given to them by God. And then there came political turmoil that threw all of that into question in the minds of certain people. The Romans came as colonizers and imposed a new rule and a new government. They demanded taxes. Everyone had to pay taxes to a new ruler, Caesar. Each house and lineage were counted and taxed, and we hear about that in Luke chapter 2. This was confusing. The land was either not free or the new rulers had not recognized that the people were of God. It seemed like the divine authority was usurped. These were people that, well, they've been giving their sacrifices to God, so why would they pay tribute to another ruler? Therefore, the idea of taxation by a new authority was indeed very confusing. It was controversial and it was odious. The Herodians and the Pharisees, these were two groups that did not see eye to eye. Though they had found a way, they thought, to trap our Lord. The Pharisees hated anything foreign and were for the purity and uh, of faith and culture. They loved the old time religion and culture and anyone who disagreed was not a true believer. The Herodians on the other hand loved peace and they supported the idea of Herod as the governor. Though many thought he was an imposter, pretty much he was. Herod's party wanted peace at all cost and so they supported taxation by Rome, while the Pharisees saw taxation as an abomination. This did not stop the two opposing groups from trying to trip up Jesus to have a conspiracy against him. You see, they figured whatever our Lord said, each will have a reason to accuse him of something. Notice uh, what uh, Matthew says, uh, kind of like an editorial edition by, uh, in verse 18. Our Lord knew what they were up to. He knew the malice. So what he did was, he asked for a coin. Show me a coin. Then he asked a question like, well, what is this going to mean? Who's, 
whose uh, image is this? Well, duh, you know, Jesus, everybody knows that, Caesar. Well, it's Caesar's. Whose inscription? Caesar's. Well, you see what happened? They convicted themselves. And he told them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God what is God's. You see, Matthew reported that upon hearing his answer, these strange bedfellows found that they'd been had, and they went away. They were looking for an answer that would trap him, but they learned a lesson in living in uncertain and confusing times. How then do we as Christians live the Christian life in our own confusing time? The answers could be found in this story. First of all, not all that appear as coalition is honest and edifying. When two polar groups, the Pharisees and the Herodians, got together, they were not going to our Lord to learn. They were going to trap him. In our postmodern world, spirituality and culture are important since old assumptions have been challenged. The need for meaning, rather than to be understood and seen through grand stories, requires personal contemplation and relevance in light of the individual experience. Did you hear that? You hear about relative truth? Yet not, no one institution has the answer and individuals become free to make meaning as they see fit. To many of us as Christians, this can make, become a very confusing and challenging thing. Some have found meaning in worshiping and celebrating rituals of other religions, Eastern mysticism and foreign objects. Old liturgies have been seen as lacking meaning and sometimes wonder if going to church is even necessary and so our pews become empty. Thank God they're not today. The message of St. John is instructive here. Before you dabble in what you do not understand, consider this message. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And we know that's happening in our confusing times. Secondly, avoid getting sucked in by flattery and religiosity. Notice how the Herodians and the Pharisees presented their false inquiry. Teacher, we know that you are truthful and teach the way of God in truth, and you defer to no one, for you are not partial to anyone. Individual stories and anecdotal evidence do not make theories. The 2016 presidential election in the United States highlighted the power of fake news. Technology has made it easier to plant untrue stories to sway emotion. Have you read various things in Facebook or uh, in, in these various uh, places where we get news and whatnot? You know, and now we're beginning to wonder, is this real or is it fake? How do you know? Examine all stories. Use your intellect. God has given you a brain. Use it. Read your Bible and do not wait for others to give you their own interpretation. Many who claim to wear their religion on their sleeves may not have good intentions in leading people to Christ. Flamboyancy and fancy buildings is not a Christian make. The, the Pharisees preached about the purity of the faith, but they made oppressive laws that did not support human freedom. Remember what Jesus called them? Hypocrites, whitewashed walls, sepulchers, graves. 
Love one another is no longer preached from pulpits in many churches, but how a Christian should vote and who should be called a Christian. Thirdly, not all what is lawful is moral. The Herodians and the Pharisees were looking for point of law, not morality. Unjust laws are the sources of oppression in the world. So don't get bogged down by oppressive law and feel righteous while ignoring what is just. Fourthly, you can learn through careful observation. That's almost a lost art. Notice how our Lord gave them an answer through a simple illustration. Show me the coin. It's really interesting, isn't it, these Pharisees and Herodians who really would loathe to, hang, hand, uh, to handle a coin that is from the Roman government, had one. So he says, show me the coin used for the poll tax. tax. And in our postmodern world, information technology has philosophical implications and requires the re-examinations of our prior assumptions. Technology has empowered and unleashed a power never before seen in our world. The world has been made smaller and time and space have seemed to disappear. You know this. When the massacre was taking place in the Gaza Strip, people had their phones out and were filming it, and we could see it here as it happened. Isn't that a small world? Some of you folks will remember that when we got our news, and this was especially during World War II and post-World War II, we had movie reels. Remember those? Newsreels? That's how you found out what was going on. And now, we know about it immediately. Talk about the ability to buzz people up, right? <laughs> and with the clever uh, artificial intelligence now, things can be tweaked to a point to where you can make somebody say something they are not saying. And they can edit the film so that what you are seeing is really not reality. Uncertain times, don't you think? So you see, I can sit in the comfort of my room and talk as well as see videos of a child taking his first step of a world away. If Cheryl and I would have wanted to and had thought about it, we could have had FaceTime or Zoom or something like that and gotten a hold of our, our granddaughter uh, and seeing Dante, our great-grandchild, for the first time as she held him in her arms. But we're old school, we didn't think about that. And after that we go, why didn't I think about that? You know, I have this dumb phone in my pocket that uh, is supposed to be smart. It's only as smart as the person who's using it. So there you go. Uh, sometimes we're technolo technologically impaired. And boy, I fit that category sometimes. Used to be I could keep up with everything, but now, whew, I did that. Okay, well, I can't put it in slow motion because it goes. So, I can also participate in rituals half a world away. Yet, has this made our problems lighter? Well, you know the answer to that, not really, because hunger and diseases still exist in our world. Ebola needed just a few days to get to Dallas from West Africa. And the distance between the haves and the have-nots has widened. We see this happening almost daily. The relationship between children and their parents have changed. When a child can no longer depend on the elderly for stories of the land, but can Google such stories instantly, who needs grandparents and the wisdom of the gospel, the aged, with that wisdom? 
When a child is the one showing the parents and grandparents how the smartphone works, it raises questions, does it not, about the wisdom of the years. I've heard this. Grandpa, don't you know how to do that? Uh. You're going to show me, right? Well, yeah, you just do this and this and this and this. Okay, can you put that in slow motion? Can you write down some notes for me? Yet the Bible instructs us to honor our parents. And we're losing it. That has not changed and it won't change for us as Christians. So that's why we need to stand up and be an example for the rest of the world. We have children and many of them in the, in the foster uh, system or being adopted uh, that they've had trouble honoring a parent that has beat them up or shamed them, thrown them out in the streets, and they don't know how to handle having a parent, whether it's a foster parent or otherwise. They don't know how to handle what love is. Because what they have been learning certainly isn't love. It is get along. Trust in yourself. Don't trust anybody else because they're the enemy. You have to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You have to be strong. But what a sad thing. These are uncertain times. And fifthly, you can't withdraw from the world so that you can be a follower of Christ. Did you hear that? You cannot withdraw from the world so that you can be a follower of Christ. You're in it, folks. You're in it. What does Jesus tell us not to be? Of it. Jesus says, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. The spiritual life should not be confused with the political and economic life. You cannot cease to pay your taxes because you are a Christian or because the state uses your tax money in ways you don't like. The postmodern world and its period allows us to interpret our spirituality in ways that we like. And for the first time it's happening in human history, we have separated religion from spirituality. While spirituality has been defined as the need for meaning, religion has been seen as a way to answer those questions posed by spirituality. So you see, we cannot as Christians seek to use our religion as an excuse to withdraw from the world or to draw the coercive power of the state on us and our faith. We can, however, challenge the authority of the state through the le legitimate means rather than take up arms against the state inciting our religion as a reason for anti-patriotic activity. So what are we hearing here? You do what you need to do as a Christian called by God. Martin Luther himself said, the government is there for a reason. If you transgress, you get punished. But he also said that if it's unjust, you need to revolt, but not with the sword, with the pen. How many of us, and I'm guilty of this, how many of us will go uh, to the Capitol or talk with a, one of the legislators, whether it's congressperson or uh, representative, and share with them what your thoughts, your beliefs are, or written a hand. You don't type it out, folks. You hand write a letter, even if it's a form letter. Change it up a little bit, but write it in your own handwriting. It means a lot because you have taken the time to do this. And I think I've told you before, but every handwritten letter represents 15,000 people. Do you see what power you have with the pen? 
Those who want to drag us down uh, an eternal rabbit hole are the ones who go and they write. All their cockamamie ideas, they get them through because they write. Or they go and visit. They occupy an office until something happens. How many of us are willing to do that? Okay, I see one over here. <laughs> I would hope I would do that. But you see, these are such uncertain times. And instead of just jumping into these uncertain times and being totally uncertain, you do something about it. Paul tells us that we put on the whole armor of God and stand against the enemy. That we move forward. That when we're threatened, we don't back up. We stand fast. We challenge the uncertainties. And through these other things that I've mentioned already, once again, you use that gray matter that's hidden in a dark place and use it to God's glory. So what does it say? Get a backbone. Be a Christian and stand fast. You see, um, it is possible to live as Christians and be a light on the hill for those who are struggling and yearning for answers in this uncertain time. Others can see in us the light of Christ and live well and derive meaning in this postmodern world, this world that is so uncertain. The term Christian then ceases to be ab about intolerance, but about humility and demonstration of grace and love. This is how we live in this age of confusion and varied ideas, not as closed-minded people who dig in and call for the restoration of the purity of rituals and practices. At the same time, we must examine ourselves and our relationship with fellow humans and with God. We celebrate culture and diversity without seeing others as filth or below ourselves through such celebration, we would honor God our maker if we don't do those things. In our postmodern world, in a world of uncertainty, studies have shown and we have come to believe that how people live and how they act depends upon their history. Therefore, no one is as is civilized as those in past centuries believed. And no one is a savage. What does it tell us? We're all in the same gene pool, doesn't it? Hmm? Just wiggling around out there, doing our thing. But no one is inferior. Above tribal superiority and above ethnocentrism. I love that word. I looked it up. <laughs> the one true thing we need as those who walk under the shadow of the cross is love for fellow humans. Love for God and love for each other. For as the Apostle uh, John wrote, love, God is love and the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in them. In his book, Jesus the Stranger, Joseph Donders writes, Do you remember how once in the gospel the Pharisees trying to trap Jesus came with that question about paying your tax? And how he asked them, show me the coin used for paying the tax? And how then he asked, whose portrait is it? And how they answered, it bears the image of the emperor and his name. And how then he said, give to the emperor what is of the emperor, Caesar. And how he then said, and give to God what those things that belong to God. He might have asked, whose image do you bear? Whose name is stamped on you? And the answer would have been, or should have been, we are carrying, carrying God's image. We are carrying God's name. He coined us in his image. He named us. We have his imprint, his stamp, his seal. We are legal tender because of him. We are his money and we should be spent. Money should circulate. We should circulate. 
Money should go from hand to hand. We should go from hand to hand. Money should be thumbed. We should be thumbed. Money has to be used. We must be used. We should not keep ourselves and all that we've got safe in a bank or in an old sock or in the ivory tower of our competence or under the cover of our dignity or in the clenches, the clenched fist of our power. God is trying to use us to pay off our debts. To pay off the debts which we owe each other. So, the question for each of us is, since you have been coined, God said, let us make man in our own image. You have been coined in the image of God. And you have God's name upon you. Those who are baptized in Christ have put on Christ. Therefore, you are Christian. You are a saint. You are a follower. Go and do. So maybe, maybe the question we can ask when we look at ourselves in the mirror is, whose coin are you? Whose name is on you? How will you be spent today? How will people see you being spent today? What is the value that you are describing of yourself and of the person with whom you are in dialogue? What? The answer is one that you have to make the one that you must declare, and the one that you need to have joy and to celebrate, because you'd be rendering to God that which is God's. That's everything. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able for our uh, song of the day. confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. We take a moment, share the peace with one another. Do it the way it's written for today. Yeah, we know what that feels like, so I said we know what for our offering. Son, give thanks with a 
grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us give Capos on? <laughs> okay, here we go. You may be seated. We will remember that in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, remember us always in your kingdom and keep teaching us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear people of God, all things are prepared, and the Lord invites you to his supper table. As indicated in the bulletin, worthiness to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus is simply a believing heart. For God knows our heart. And it is there that God does some business with us and then it makes us worthy to come to him. 
For those of you who are communing with us for the very first time, we do offer grape juice over wine if that is what you require or desire. We also have gluten-free wafers, also if that is what you desire or require. As you come to the server, that would be myself, uh, the first one, and that is if you want gluten-free wafer, just put up your index finger. No one else is gonna see it, okay? Just put up, I know what to serve you. Likewise with the wine server. So come and be freshed and know that your sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. The ushers will assist you in a moment. <clears throat>
Whisper, whisper, whisper in my ear And tell me words I thought I'd never hear Show me, show me, show me what you see Right, right in front, front of me. to grow and when my faith is prone to fear remind me of your love remind me that you'll never let me go remind me remind me Remind me of your love Remind me, remind me Remind me of your love Jesus, remind me, remind me Remind me of your love Oh, remind me, remind me Remind me of your love So whisper, whisper, whisper in my ear And tell me words I thought I'd never hear Show me, show me, show me what you Right in front of me Jesus illuminate what's right in front of me Now the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the one who's just given you of himself and this meal of bread and wine, may he strengthen and preserve each one of you in true faith and in your serving till life eternal. Amen. Amen. And now the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loves us and through grace gives to us eternal comfort and hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and deed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Servant. 
Please be seated for some quick announcements before we get in there and have some snacky poos. Looks like we have one, two. I'm showing what we Gail has made these for us. We were talking about doing the hospital bags for people when they're having to be there with a loved one for a length of time. So we're, she's making some bags for us, and it has a couple pockets so it can fit your phone. It's got pockets so it'll fit water, snacks, and we're going to have some of these with the basic ingredients to keep people comfortable while they're sitting at a hospital with a loved one. I've done the sitting at the hospital before, and I always get so thirsty. And, <laughs> and there's never water, it doesn't seem like. So that's one important thing that I can think of. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> yes, indeed. She's got more planned to make, too. Cool. She's got all this color-coded thing, because she's Gail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm selling full meal deal tickets for lunches for the bazaar. So if anybody wants tickets for lunch, we can buy them ahead of time. That way, we know a you know, approximately how much soup to make or how many pies we're going to need and that kind of stuff. Uh, full meal deal is $8 and it is soup uh, or chili and a roll and dessert and coffee. So it's not a bad deal. So if anybody's going to be here for the bazaar on Friday or Saturday, the tickets are either one, doesn't make any difference. So if anybody wants any, you can see me or whatever. AJ, okay. Lunch is 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yep. So I went four. Okay. But I went to a benefit last night and I don't have any money left. So <laughs> I think I, I think we've heard that before. Uh, let me tell you, they fleeced me last night. Um, I'm sure. I'm you sure. You charge interest? You charge interest? Yeah, oh, we can well, do that. We can do that. that. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, Thank boy. you. <laughs> <laughs> We're always asking for something. So um, just to let you know, the quilts. And for those of you who remember, we did the, the poor, poor painting tiles. And we had like 15 ladies come in. And they used their imaginations. And they did an awesome job. You can buy these today. Or you can put in your order today or set them back and pay for them later, I think, and wherever you went. But anyway, they are available today. So look at what they've done on the quilts. Look at what they've done with the tiles. And just enjoy. Thank you. The price on the quilts is 40, 45. And there's a little sign here that says what the tile coasters and stuff. So there's price up there. So enjoy. Look them over. Christmas is coming. The ghost is getting. Thank you. Put a penny in the old man's hat. I, may I? Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you for all of the cards and prayers on behalf of Todd. And it's going to be a, a long journey, and there's lots of doctor appointments in his future. Um, so just keep the prayers coming. Thank you. Okay, and then <clears throat> from uh, last week when we had our pie auction, did you read about that? Uh, yeah. We made more than $1,600 on that. So thank you to all who participated. Awesome. And uh, let's see here. Don't forget about the shoe boxes. They are, uh, I think they're still out there, aren't they? They're oh, in the office. They're in the office because we had so many other things that were going on. But uh, we have lots of them. And please take one or two and go shopping. You know, like I said before, you can take a, a, a grandson, granddaughter, or if you have young kids, uh, help them. Or go shopping and bring the stuff here. Yeah, go shopping, bring it here, because we're going to have a stuffing party. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Box stuffing. Packing. 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 Yeah, pack. Well, what I do is I, and I stuff it right in there. <laughs> uh, we already have some wonderful things back there. What? We're going to buy my ghost. It's a chair. Oh, there it is over there, Coy.
It should be on. Okay, you're on. Testing one, two, three. Well, I feel so f sorry for our minister. Did you hear what I said? He he didn't have any money. Do you know why he doesn't have any money? No, I'll tell you why. The pie, pie thing, when we auction off the pie, I made him pay a lot of money for a pie. How much did you pay? You remember? About $300 for I the pie. I thought I got you, but you got me. <laughs> so I want to buy to take it for him and his wife. Oh! Because he doesn't have any money. So we'll, we'll buy a ticket for him because uh, I, I'm so proud of him. That actually, that, I think that was my wife, Ty, that he gave so, so much money for. So thank thank God for the man. And I want to give him 20 bucks but, to make but sure. Don't forget, it was, it was a special tater fly. That that's right. Oh. Oh. That's right, and, and we are taking it easy on it. I have a couple more tiny pieces left. And well, I never get anything totally right anymore, so I'll have <laughs> let my wife tell you. Just join the club there. Oh, I'm no sorry that he can't remember things, but, but it, was, it was tater pie. You remember Texas Bob Wells and the Playboys? Yeah. Well, it was his song, and tater pie, and Pastor Fred graced us with the song and bought the pie. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, Coy uh, bought the uh, apple pandowdy that I yeah, made. Yeah, I did. But I didn't pay as much as you did. I know. I know. There your money. Oh, for the thank fun. you. You're such a nice man. Well, that's why all thank the... Thank you, Helen, for giving him money to give me. That's why all, all the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, now, notice in here that we have uh, a couple of memorial services <clears throat> coming up. Uh, this next uh, Saturday is for Eunice Bauer, and then the following Tuesday on the no 7th of November, Memorial Service to Dennis Slider. And so please come and support the family uh, with your presence, and if not, it, at least a card or uh, something to let them know that you're praying for them and you're holding them up before our Lord constantly, and that uh, you'll be available to them for some encouragement. and. Um, Let's see. Oh, next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. I don't know if you read that in there, but I got to remind you. Reformation Sunday, so wear, wear red. red. I knew there was a reason to wear red. Wear red. What did I say? Wear red. Wear red. Wear red. All right. What color are you going to wear? Red. red. Yes, Michelle. Um, I just, we talked about this, but I see you've got the chosen listed for Saturdays. And um, this Saturday. That, that's going to be canceled for that day. Okay, I was wondering if that was for yep. Day. yep, we're postponing it. Yep, yep, we're going to. Yeah, no interferences. Yeah, cool, cool. And then uh, let me see, what else? Remember the Holiday Bazaar? I know you, uh, Ann mentioned it just a little bit ago, but uh, they've, uh, they have some really neat stuff. Uh, Grandma's Attic. There's always some fun things that go along with that. There's a Christmas room, all kinds of neat stuff. And there's going to be a fully decorated tree out in the lobby. In fact, you can go see it now. It's an imitation tree, okay? Uh, Pat Grubley just kind of grimaced when we told him that. But uh, uh, it's all decorated with the lights and everything. And you can, you can uh, put in, how, what is our, uh, opportunity. the opportunity? And how much are they per opportunity? Six tickets for a dollar. Six tickets for a dollar, or five dollars, sorry. Six dollar tickets, tickets for a dollar, no. Uh, a dollar each, or six for five. Whew. Boy, howdy. Okay, so you can look at it in the lobby, okay? I think that's, um, I think that's it. Uh, all right, anybody else have anything for the good of the order? All right, we are going to sing our table prayer. Praise God from Him, all blessings flow. So if you stand as you're able, and then if you'd be so uh, so kind as to allow our guests to go into the goodie table first, okay? Yeah.
Please don't rush the table and leave them behind. You know, <laughs> grab them by the arm if you're that anxious. Okay, and bring them, drag them if you have to. Good deal. Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. God is good. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. And he's coming again soon. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. Now, after you have your snacky booth, you get out there into your uh, mission field and let them know that they are welcome to come here and you want to share Jesus with them. So, go in peace. Keep serving the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.